In this lesson, we're going to use all of the skills that you practiced in the last set of videos on simplifying trig expressions to verify identities. And when we verify an identity, basically what we're doing is we're proving that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And there are different ways to verify. The method that I use is that you work on one side of the equation only until you reach the other side. So until you can manipulate one side, it doesn't have to be the left, it could be the right. Generally we start with the most complicated side first, but you keep working with one side and manipulating until you get an expression that is exactly the same or equal, equal to the right hand side. So we'll start with example one and to me it looks like the left hand side is the most complicated and so we'll use the strategies that we learned from the last section of videos where we have two terms and I'm going to try to combine them as one. So I rewrote the left hand side just to give me a little space. If it helps you to see better I'll put the cosine x over one. The LCD is cosine x so I'll multiply by cosine x over cosine x which gives me cosine squared x minus one over cosine x. And we'll look at the cosine squared x minus one and see if we can uh, come up with a substitution for that. Using the Pythagorean identity, in order to get cosine squared x minus one, I would have to subtract sine squared x from each side. And I'd also have to subtract one from each side. And so on the left hand side, we'd get cosine squared x minus one and on the right hand side we'll get negative sine squared x. So I know that I can substitute the negative sine squared x in for the cosine squared x minus one. And since my goal was to manipulate the left hand side until I reached an expression equivalent or exactly the same as the right hand side, I'm done. All right, let's try example two and then I'll have you do practice problem one and practice problem two. Now even though the right hand side might seem more complicated, in this case it seems a little easier if I just multiply out the left hand side and see if that matches the right hand side. And so I'll, I'll rewrite this as one minus sine x times one minus sine x. Multiplying that out, when I do the first, I get one. My outer is negative sine x, my inner is also negative sine x, and my last, a negative times a negative, is a positive, that's sine squared x. Combining those two together, I get the exact same expression that's on the right hand side. So we verified this identity. Now some of these at the beginning are a little easy or easier, they definitely get more complicated as we go, uh, but I'd like you to pause the video and do practice problems one and two and then start the video to check your work. Combining tan x plus one over tan x. I'd want to put tan x over one. I'd need a common denominator of tan x so I'd multiply by tan x over tan x. This will give me tan squared x plus one over tan x. This is e tan squared x plus one is equal to secant squared x over tan x. Here's where I have to now play around with this a little bit. I have cosecant and secant, and the cosecant is one over the sine, and the secant is one over the cosine. So my next job is to rewrite secant squared and tan x using sines and cosines. Coming from here. I get one over cosine squared x divided by sine over cosine x. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. The cosine will cancel one of the cosines. And so I have one over cosine x times one over sine x, which is equal to secant x times cosecant x. And this is the same as the right hand side because multiplication is commutative. Certainly you can rewrite it if you want, but you don't have to. This expression right here 
is the equivalent to the cosecant x times the secant x. All right, let's look at practice problem two. I'm going to multiply the one minus cosine x squared out. All right, when I multiply each expression, this expression by itself, I get one minus cosine x is the outer minus another cosine x is the inner plus cosine squared x which gives me 1 minus 2 cosine squared x excuse me that should be 2 cosine x plus cosine squared x and so and so we got the same expression when we multiplied this out that is on the right hand side of the equation or the identity. The other thing that I want to stress when working with verifying identities is that there's more than one way to verify each one and as again as long as you use appropriate identities and basically legal mathematical moves uh, it's okay if your answer looks different than the one in the back of the textbook or if you do something a little bit differently than I do. For instance, this problem right here with the uh, tan x plus 1 over tan x, you could have, if you wanted to, uh, instead of combining those together, you could have changed the tan x to sine over cosine, and you could have changed 1 over tan to cotan, and changed that to cosine over sine. So you could use that strategy of changing everything to sines and cosines. It really is, it, it comes with experience trying to get the most efficient way, and I don't always do it the most efficient way the first time. Sometimes I'll try it one way and I'll realize, wow, had I made a substitution, this might have been easier. But again, it's about persistence, and um, I personally think these are kind of like puzzles. I, I enjoy them. Uh, I guess if you're someone who likes to do Sudokus or things like that, I, I put these in that category. But then I'm a math teacher, so maybe this, <laughs> maybe that's my issue. Anyway. I hope you enjoy these. That doesn't mean you're going to. All right, the next two, I'm actually going to have you pause the video again, and I'd like you to do example three and practice problem three on your own. They're very similar. Uh, try those. Multiply. Basically, look at the most complicated side, which is obvious in these two, and simplify these or verify these. So I would like you to actually do both example three and practice problem three by multiplying, making a trig substitution, and you know verifying that the left hand side does equal the right hand side. So pause the video, do both of these, and then start the video up again to check your work. All right, on the left hand side, in example three. When I multiply out or FOIL, the first gives me 1, the outer gives me plus sine x, the inner gives me minus sine x, and the last gives me minus sine squared x. The inside terms cancel. You certainly could have used the shortcut a minus b times a plus b would give you a squared minus b squared, which is 1 minus sine squared x looking for a trigonometric identity, a, a Pythagorean identity. Manipulating 1 minus the sine squared. If you subtracted sine squared from both sides, you would get cosine squared. So 1 minus sine squared x is equal to cosine squared x. And we verified. On the right hand side, let's just jump right to the shortcut. This is an a minus b times an a plus b. It's going to be a squared minus b squared. So 1 minus cosine squared x. And again, if you look up at this Pythagorean identity, if you subtracted cosine squared x from each side, you would get sine squared x. And we have verified that is equal to the right hand side. We'll start the next problems in the next video.